Слава Україні, шановні колеги, друзі! Мене звати Геннадій Білоус, я вчитель англійської мови, екзаменатор міжнародних мовних іспитів від видавництва компанії Pearson, тренер курсів підвищення кваліфікації ProTeach і методист компанії Internal Education. Я надзвичайно радий вітати вас сьогодні на цьому вебінарі. І давайте поглянемо, що на нас очікує протягом е, цієї зустрічі з вами. Наша адженда, план роботи. Перше, е, ви переглянете вебінар у записі. Чому я акцентую на цьому увагу? Тому що, в першу чергу, цей вебінар е, для тих з вас, хто не зміг потрапити на онлайн версію його через відключення світла або зайнятість або будь-яку іншу причину. І ті з вас, хто не вперше долучається до вебінарів від компанії Internal Education, напевне знають, що, як правило, наші вебінари достатньо інтерактивні. Так, ми запитуємо вас щось е, у чаті, ви нам відповідаєте, ми комунікуємо. Звісно, у форматі запису це нереально, проте мені не дуже хотілося б, щоб ви просто сиділи і десь в певний час дивились вебінар без будь-якої інтеракції, тому час від часу я все ж таки буду вас щось запитувати, запитувати вас про щось замислитись, звернутися до свого вчительського освітнього досвіду. І е, в деякі моменти ви навіть без проблем можете натиснути паузу під час запису, ну, під час перегляду запису і собі замислитись над тим питанням, яке я вам ставлю. Дати собі 5-10 секунд, подумати, потім відновити а перегляд і переконатись в тому, чи правильно ви думали, чи а, а, схоже це з тим, про що я а, далі говоритиму у а, вебінарі. Тому, будь ласка, не нехтуйте можливістю натиснути паузу, я десь вам буду натякати іноді, коли це можна зробити, щоб а, така собі пасивна, але все ж таки інтеракція відбувалася. І друга частина нашого плану на сьогодні – це познайомити з Internal Education трішки поближче. Особливо, я думаю, це буде актуально для тих з вас, хто вперше долучається до вебінарів від Internal Education, або, можливо, для тих з вас, хто не дуже багато знають про нашу компанію, про те, чим ми займаємось, чим ми сьогодні а, живемо. Для вас, шановні колеги, вчителі англійської мови, там – ваших учнів. Отже, да. чим одне хочу нагадати, звісно, ви всі отримаєте сертифікати участі, навіть по перегляду цього відео, проте є одна невеличка умова, вона має бути, я думаю, ви здогадуєте, що це таке, це, звісно, проходження невеличкого тесту. І бачите, я тут навіть виділив слово taken таким жирним, тому що Якщо ви подивитесь цей вебінар достатньо уважно, то у вас не буде жодних проблем з тим, щоб скласти цей тест. Він буде повністю стосуватись інформації, яку ви е, сьогодні почуєте, і буде е, від того дуже легким. Тому let's go! Рушаємо! So, at the start, I think, well, um, you all should kind of know the topic of today's Uh, session of today's webinar, right? We are we'll be talking about teachers' dreams more to some extent. And now, what I'd like you actually to do right at the beginning is to pause this video, yes, and think what dreams you personally have as a teacher. Maybe you're dreaming of your students' better results, or you're dreaming of higher salary, more wages. Or this is the work-life balance, what you're dreaming of, because at the moment maybe your work dominates over your personal life and you'd like to balance it somehow or anything else. You can pause the video and think about it. Well, anything that you can think of that you lack at the moment and that would be your dream at the time being? 
Well, I hope that all your dreams as teachers and as human beings uh, come to life one day sooner or later. But if we, you know, talk about a smaller scale dreams, so to say, this is something we're going to have closer look at today. One of one of our dreams might be something small, something, you know, at the lesson level. For instance, speaking of grammar, we might dream for our students to enjoy grammar lessons, to have fun, for these grammar lessons to be as stress-free and as communicative as possible for them, right? And this is something we'll be looking at in more detail today. If we are thinking about a grammar lesson, about a stress-free and a communicative grammar lesson, it should have some key features, right? Well, any grammar lesson we are teaching should have some key features about it. One of the key features of this grammar lesson would be focus on accuracy, right? Because when teaching grammar, when introducing grammar, yes, when, when practicing grammar, we'd like our students in the end to be as accurate as possible with the target grammar we're teaching them, right? However, at the same time, we'd like, you know, it, it's like with this work-life balance, we'd like to balance accuracy with something else, right? And that would be, any ideas? Of course, it would be fluency. So together with, together with using grammar accurately, yes, and using grammar as we are teaching and introducing it, we'd still like our students to develop their fluency, yes, and try and be, and, 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 and um, some parts of the lessons to be interactive, to be communicative, pair work, group work, something, something uh, that would enable students uh, develop their fluency more, right? So the key feature, is when accuracy is somehow, or at least to some extent, is balanced with fluency in a grammar lesson. Another feature would be, we'd like our students to stay motivated throughout the whole lesson. Therefore, we need to be thinking of some fun topics, yes, to be uh, involved in a lesson for students to enjoy it, for students to find something that resembles with themselves, right? That 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 reflects their 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 um opinions and attitudes, so on and so forth. Especially when we understand that in a grammar lesson, there could be quite a lot of demotivation uh, parts, right? Because <clears throat> We anticipate that our students are going to, you know, fail at some point. They're they're going to misunderstand something. Then they, they will have some some problems when practicing the language accurately. They will be making some mistakes, and this is where we'll be interfering, uh, doing some error correction. And this is where you know their their enthusiasm probably will go down a bit. So again, this is what we need to be looking for when planning a grammar lesson, right? Knowing that our students might not enjoy some stages of a, of a grammar lesson. They might feel, you know, uh, not very nice about it. We need to enhance it with some fun. Yes, with some fun moments, fun information, games like activity, so on and so forth. So that is the second uh, aspect about a grammar lesson that I find important when planning my grammar lessons as well. And one more thing, we also might think that, and that, well, again, it could be true, that in a grammar lesson, there are lots of us. Yes, there is lots of teacher talking time because what? We introduce grammar, we explain grammar, we, deal, we, we help students deal with difficulties, we do error correction, so on and so forth, right? So there's lots of us, uh, especially at the introduction stage, yes, when we introduce a new grammar concept to them. And again, at the same time, we need to balance it with something else. And if we have teacher talking time, there should be some, what? Exactly, there should be some student talking time. 
which shouldn't be all about us. Yes, we need to let our students be able to, again, interact, communicate and, and show themselves. Yes, and step in and take the floor and lead the way sometimes. So again, the balance between teacher talking time and student talking time is invaluable. So um, this is something we'll be having a look at today. Again, uh, well, uh, we'll be talking about something a bit more, well, a bit less about another thing, but we'll be mentioning these things in terms of planning and um, conducting uh, well a grammar lesson. Speaking of grammar lessons and uh, well, um, you know, we are the internal uh, lovers, so to say, of this approach to teaching lessons, to speaking about lesson shapes, ESA, ESA grammar lessons. Well, do you know anything about it? What about this ESA? What is this? What are these letters ESA stand for? Again, this is another great opportunity for you to press the pause and to think about it, reflect on your teaching experience. Have you ever come across ESA? What this ESA lesson, uh, grammar lesson or ESA lesson shape might stand for? So you can pause it now and then resume and see if you were thinking it in the right way. All right, so any ideas what ESA is? Let me help you. Practically, those ESA stand for engage, study, and activate. And basically, these are the three lesson stages, yes, that we could have when teaching grammar to our students. And again, in this way, we would ensure that our students experience all that balance that we were talking about a bit earlier today. So um, what about if we look at this engaged study and activate lesson stages? Um, the question is, what stage do you think is the most important one? What stage of the lesson will dedicate most of the time to? Where we are going, you know, to pause for some substantial time and, and go through it in, in lot of detail. So is it engage, study, or activate? plays the main role in a lesson. Okay, well, basically that would be study stage. <clears throat> it, would take, it would take up to 25, 30 minutes of the lesson, which is the biggest part. That is what we call, um, when, when something is the main part of the lesson, the main stage of the lesson, that means that our students should be in this part of the lesson most of the time of the lesson, right? So that would take up to 30 minutes of it, maybe even more, sometimes 35, well, a possibility. And this is where all the hard work, all the hardest work is going to happen. Yes, all the rules would appear in this stage. Uh, well, and that would be us introducing the rules or students working out the rules with our help. Well, different ways how we can go about this one. Then all the practice, all the gap fills and open the brackets and matching and whatnot is going to happen here. Yes, the students are going to work on controlled practice activities and practice grammar in a controlled way. And then error correction, because this is where we'll, we, we've just taught grammar yes it could be completely new to students and this is why we expect them to make quite a lot of oh what well some mistakes here and we would go and help students and correct them immediately yes and get them back to the rules that we've just had a look at so lots and lots of hard work that could be again remember a bit demotivating for them here that is why we need to balance this stage out, the study stage, with two other stages of the lesson, with engage and activate. And this is where probably most fun and engagement and student talking time is going to happen in engage and in activate stages. And actually, 
these two guys are the main focus of the webinar today. We'll be having a look more at engage and activate and see how we can help our students live through a grammar lesson with uh, as little stress as possible and with as much engagement as, uh, 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 as it could be. So let's start with the um, engage stage. What about, well, the, the main aspects of it, yes, the main features of the engaged stage, what kind of stage that is? Well, it should be short. We shouldn't spend all the time in the world here. Yes, it should be quite short. It should be relevant. Relevant in terms of, um, it, it's nice when it has this connection to the rest of the lesson that's coming after it, yeah? And it has some relevance to students' own opinions um, as well. Yeah, um, it should be fun. It could be fun. I mean, it just it's, it's it's nice. It's a nice thing if it is and interactive. Again, this is where this is where we'd like the students to interact with each other in pairs, in groups, all together with us, the teachers. Yeah. So that would be the key features of the engagement stage. Now, what I'll be doing now. I'll be sharing with you some ideas for the engagement stage, uh, uh, for, for, for this stage, yeah? And, um, uh, well, just, just have fun, just enjoy, just see what could be done at this stage and, what, and, and think about whether it could work with your students or not and um, whether you are using it on, on daily basis or not. And actually, well, to be honest, it's not going to be rocket science, nothing extremely fancy, but all of the things, all of the ideas are completely workable and and and, and they could uh, be, well, nice, 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 nice thing to have in this engaged stage, okay? So, as the first idea, I'll be showing you different pictures of different unusual jobs, okay? Have a look at these pictures and think about if you know what this job is, if you can think of the name for this job. You are more than welcome to see the picture, press the pause button and, and think about the name of it and then resume and see if you were thinking uh, it's uh, the same way as I have it, okay? So, look at this one. What is this guy doing? Any ideas what this job is? All right. Actually, he is a brine paint water. Well, would you like to do anything like that? Testing how fast paint uh, dries? Just sit in there, you know, you dry a wall and then you sit for some time and then you, you know, you check you check the time and then you report back to the companies and say, okay, something needs to be changed with this paint because it's, you know, it dries some kind of wrong way. Well, what a nice job to have, isn't it? Now, next one. Any ideas, any thought how this job might be called? Okay. Well, iceberg movers. You know, yeah, quite I think they quite an important uh, work for for any for any ship or cruise liner or boat or whatever who's going to sail them because yeah, iceberg could be could block the ways, could be quite dangerous. We know it. You know, we've we've got a big a big example in history where iceberg caused you know yeah tremendous tremendous um, uh, uh, disasters. So yeah, iceberg movers, would you like to be, you know, sailing on a boat like that and moving iceberg from here to there if it blocks the way, you know? Okay, all right, let's go on. Now, what's happening here? What is the man doing there? Mm -hmm. Seems to be marrying he, the mask. Is he underwater, no? Yeah? Okay, so what do you think the name of the job is? All right. That is scuba diving pizza delivery man. Well, so apparently this is some kind of a hotel. Yeah, underwater hotel. And you get your pizza delivered. Well, um, with the help of the man like that. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, amazing. Amazing. You know, when I 
when I saw it, I thought, oh my God, that's 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 posh, that's fantasy. <laughs> okay, now let's move on. Oh, what about these guys? Have a look. Well, definitely you see they're tasting something. However, what do you think they're tasting? Uh -huh. All right, actually, their dog food tastes it. Well, you know, some, sometimes, now I'm thinking about this job. I think that, well, I've seen it. I've seen a few a few films where uh, people would eat, you know, a bit of uh, uh, dog food sometimes. Well, sometimes when you look at the ingredients of it, it's not that bad. Yeah, It's not that bad at all. So would you like to be a dog food taster? Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. If you think of your students, uh, would they would they be fine with any of these jobs? Would they like to be an iceberg mover or a painter watcher or a dog food taster? All right. Now, well, everything that I'm driving here to is oh yeah, and one more an iconic one from Japan. What's the name of this job? All right. So yeah, definitely these are train pushers. Oh, these guys need to be skillful and tough and hard, you know, to push all that, uh, yeah, all that crowd into, uh, into the train. Yeah, okay. I think I think they they, they are taught some 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 proper skills for them to act together. Yes, because if you push one way, I think the people will fall out from another door. So yeah, I need to, they need to they need to work in a team. Yeah, they collaboratively, so to say. So train pushes. <laughs> okay. So now, yeah, you know, what I'm driving at is basically using Pinterest. I told you some ideas are not going to be, you know, astonishingly fancy or whatever, but pictures that are engaging, that are fun, that let your students imagine things, that let your students personalize the content and let them imagine themselves being, you know, well, in these jobs is, is fun, it's quick, it's engaging, and it lets your students, you know, pick up that, uh, that, 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 that nice pace at the start of the lesson. And then when, when then you go on into something more serious, serious afterwards. So starting with pictures, lots of fun, very easy. It takes you just a few minutes to go and, and look for uh, for those jobs uh, online. Well, maybe five to 10 minutes. Uh, and there you go. You've got some fun for your students and you can reuse the pictures anyway. Now, let's get into, uh, into uh, idea number two. Have a look at this granny. Well, doesn't she look gorgeous? Oh, yes, she does. Well, I'd like to have a granny like that. What about you? What about your students? Okay. Um, well, anyway, whether you have whether you have a stylish granny like that or any other uh, type of grandmother and grandfather, this is what you could do with your students. You could show them the picture of 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 any uh, grandma, grandparents, whatever, and you can tell them, okay, guys, now imagine your grandparents and think about. You can put your students in pairs or in groups, in smaller groups, three to four people uh, possible. You can set some time limit, like one minute, one minute and a half, not more, and let them say, okay, guys, now think of some topics you would never, ever discuss with your grandparents. So what could that be? And you let them work for one minute. So again, you're more than welcome to pause the video now and to think about what topics you wouldn't discuss with your grandparents or what topics you think your students won't discuss with their grandparents. All right. If you ask me, for instance, yeah, I would doubt to discuss prices with my grandparents. I think, yeah, that wouldn't be the most pleasant thing for them to discuss. Uh, technology is a questionable thing, yeah, because well, very often grandparents are not that good with technology, but but they but you know, but they uh, but many of them would love to you know to know technologies and to be able to use technologies better. So yeah, that might be well a yes or no topic. Uh, or for instance, food. I personally would never ever talk about food because the moment the moment grandparents know 
you didn't eat your lunch or your breakfast, this is where you need to be very careful because they will, you know, literally make you eat something and make you eat a lot for you not to starve to death. <laughs> okay, so you leave students on their own for a minute or minute and a half and they and they um basically what they do they brainstorm yes different ideas different topics they personally wouldn't discuss with uh, uh with their grandparents uh you can actually enlarge the no topic to yes no or maybe type of topic and and make it like a categorization thing yes and all then and they would put and they would they would uh, put it in three different columns a yes topic a no topic a maybe topic so on and so forth but again um what i'm driving at is brainstorming a brief and engaging and personal brainstorming activity that will let students share their experiences and attitudes and opinions with each other could be a nice thing to do uh, at the start of the lesson. Let's move on. Now, um, have a look at the picture. What is the man making? Have a look. Well, again, you can pause the video and think about the ideas. What is he making? All right. I'm sure you've got some ideas. I mean, well, the picture is, is, is quite obvious, more or less. Now, I'm going to play a video to you and you'll be able to check your ideas, whether you were thinking right or wrong, okay? So please watch the video and check your ideas. А для того, щоб перевірити свої передбачення і подивитись відео, яке ми взяли з неосяжних просторів Ютуба, будь ласка, переходьте по посиланню в описі цього відео, перегляньте першу його хвилину і скоренько повертайтеся до мене. All right. Okay. At this point, some of you might say, oh, Gennady, you are a cheater. Sorry for that. Okay, so yeah, apparently, uh, well, in the end, I mean, he was he was making something kind of vase or or what, right? But um, uh, it, he finished with uh, making this wonderful plate with a heart shape in the middle of it, and um, yeah, well, the idea here is again very straightforward. He's using a video, a short video, a one minute video, one minute and a half, two minutes. Uh, video at the start of the class could be a good option and there is plenty of things you can do with it. Well, first, it's it's very attractive. Yes, students like watching videos. They would sit for this one minute and a half or two minutes just enjoying it. And well, you can trick them into something like I did. Yes, you can you can cheat a bit and let your students look at you like, oh, come on. You know, there was this space. And you say, yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, you can you can then personalize the content you could ask your students well do you enjoy uh the, the this pottery thing have you ever tried would you like to what would you make if if uh, if you tried it one day um or um uh you can you can let them describe the video as it goes for instance this video has only the the, the melody yeah the, the music uh, it, it's got no words so you can let your students and and des describe them briefly what they what they have seen, uh, or you can pause the video at some point and ask the students to predict what's going to happen later in the video if there is you know some connection and they might draw on some some ideas. So you have lots of things to do with the video, and if it's short and if it's engaging and if you can personalize it, and you know it can ease the start of the lesson, especially. Again, if the video somehow is connected to grammar you're going to be teaching later, and then you can go back to uh, the video and say, okay, do you remember the video at the start? So can you use this grammar in this video? Yes or not, or just talking about it. So uh, that, that all would work very well with, uh, with, with students. Now let's move on, number four. You could do this thing with your students. You could show them, for instance, well, uh, the map of uh, the United Kingdom and ask them, well, quite a simple, well, simple question. What are Great Britain's most famous tourist attractions? So we might assume that our students would name a few 
yeah, most popular tourist attractions, but there is a, there is, there is, there is um, uh, a thing here. Yeah, you can say, okay, however, please don't mention the British Museum, Tower of London, London Eye, Stonehenge, Big Ben. Okay, so these are the forbidden um, attractions to name. This is where they're going to give it a harder thought. And you know what they will um, end up with doing if you're not against that is using their tel their cell phones, right? So this is actually the time when you can tell them. It's like, okay, guys, I understand it's tough job. Yes, uh, I've named here all the all the uh, uh, all the attractions that you were probably thinking of. So why not using your cell phones? Yes, uh, going online and Googling it. Yes, and here, um, well, uh, you know, something something wonderful could happen because I'm sure that if students Google for most uh, attractive uh, uh, touristic spots in the United Kingdom, apart from these, they could come across something like the Eden Project or something like Churchill War Rooms or maybe the Poison Garden or probably the tiniest house ever in Great Britain. I'm not going obviously into detail of all these things and there are lots of other things that could be found online that is very attractive, but not as well known of. The main thing here is to again, bring some real life, bring bring some bring some things into classroom that students are used to doing. Yes, they're used to surfing the internet, looking for different things and just and just enjoying and, and having and, and uh, surfing the sites and and enjoying the pictures and maybe some some uh, adverts online or whatever, whatever. So why not them do something like that? Yes. And that would be the idea for um, uh, uh, how you could start your lesson in one more interesting way. It's the Google race. Yes, um, and they, 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 they will see if any of them have found something in common. They could go and read a bit more about the things they've searched for and, and think which, uh, which they would like to, to visit. Yes, which one they like um, uh, more, which they think they wouldn't enjoy that much if they were in the uh, UK, so on and so forth. But the Google race is something quick fun, relevant to life, uh, again, uh, full of opportunities to come across pictures and videos and, and, and different ideas and, and uh, relevant um, everyday vocabulary, yes, and things. So why not do it? And one more thing I'd like to share with you, which is a great start for any class, um, this QR code thing. Now, what I'd like you to do now is to pause the video, okay? Find your cell phones, find your mobile phones, um, scan the QR code and see what I've got there for you. OK, so I'm just pause the video, scan the QR code, follow the link and we'll continue. All right. Welcome back. I hope that you've done this thing or you had your mobile phone not very far away from you anyway. Um, so uh, I think you should have seen something like that, right, when when following the link. So that would be top 20 music festivals in the UK for 2023. And there is the whole list of uh, different festivals. If you scroll it, yes, you can come across this Glastonbury Festival and Field Day and All Point East. So lots and lots of different festivals. Now, one of the things, you know, I could ask you to do is, well, can you can you can you stop on one of the festivals, have a look at the lineup, and see if there is anyone you'd like to listen to live if you go to that festival? For instance, if you have a look at, at my screen, I've got all points east here, and the lineup is Gorillas, Tame Impala, The National, Disclosure, to do so on and so forth. And if you ask 
for uh, well if you ask me i would love to listen to gorillas live here yes they are quite and quite a well quite an iconic band for me and i remember um when they when they um were popular when they were especially popular when i was i think in my teens and they played something that no other band played so a bit of electronic and a bit of a bit of uh, uh rock and roll there and yeah i mean so gorillas would be my choice what about you would you choose gorillas as well anything else that you would go for in any of the lineups okay so this is one thing you could do with your students. Yes, the QR code, go go for it and, and just, um, again, personalize it as much as possible. Let students share um, their tastes in music and let them see if, if they... Uh, if they have anything in common or they have something uh, well, com completely different on their mind when when choosing a festival, so on and so forth, or anything else, you could you can uh, uh, send them the link uh, via the the QR codes to any food page, tourist page, or well, anything, anything basically. Now, speaking of uh, you know going to different festivals, I've got this question uh, for you. Have a look. Now, I'd like you to imagine just now that you're going to a music festival for a weekend, yeah, um, in a big field in the UK. So can you think of some things that you would need to take with you? So remember, imagine now you're going to the UK, big field, and the festival that would last, well, a few days, Two to three, maybe to four days festival. Yes, somewhere at the weekend, starting on Friday, finishing on, 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 on Sunday. So you can pause the video here and make a quick list, a brief list of a few things that you find absolutely um, uh, important to take with you. I hope that you've got a few things on your mind or on a piece of paper right next to you, because now... I'll play the audio to you, okay? I'll play the audio track. And please check if any of your ideas appear in this audio. Yes, if you, if you, if, 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 uh, well, uh, because you'll, um, you'll hear some people speaking of, well, at the festival, attending it, and they will, they will share with you what, share with us uh, what they find important. So listen and check with your mental or written list of ideas, okay? Let's do it. Listen to people giving advice about things to take to a music festival. Were any ideas similar to yours? Good morning, everyone. I'm standing outside the world-famous Glastonbury Festival in England. The festival has just finished, and I'm going to ask people about the festival and find out about what people should bring to the festival if they want to be comfortable. Hello, what's your name? Did you have a good time at the festival? I'm Bob, and yes, I had a great time. So what would you recommend people bring to the festival? Well, definitely a good pair of boots and a raincoat, because it always rains at Glastonbury. Thanks, Bob. And here's another happy-looking festival visitor What's your name? I'm Alice. Hi Alice. How was the festival? It was brilliant, but a little bit wet. Yes, it rained quite a lot. For people who want to go to Glastonbury in the future, what would you recommend taking? Firstly, a very big umbrella so you don't get wet. Also, some sun cream so you don't go as red as I did when the sun comes out. Thanks Alice. Here's one more smiley young man. What's your name? Craig. And how was Glastonbury? It was fantastic. The bands were amazing and even the weather wasn't too bad. Will you be back next year? Absolutely. And what will you definitely remember to pack? Next time I'll bring more money or more credit cards. It's great here but pretty expensive. I can believe it. I'll also bring a better tent and good shoes because when it rains it's really important to stay dry. Thanks, Greg. All right. I'm sure some of the ideas that you've heard in, in the audio are on your list. 
Yes or no? Hmm? Or oh, I'm wrong? I think I'm not. Okay. <laughs> anyway, good. So um, the QR code being, um, well, the last idea I wanted to share with you today. Yes, I mean, for, for the engaged stage. So QR code, again, it's something that's, you know, quite uh, quite interactive and and, it, and again, it takes students to the real world, to the real online thing and, and let them find something of their own like. Yes, for instance, like here, choosing one of the festivals, choosing one of the bands and then and, 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 and then going with uh, the audio, for instance, yeah, thing. Okay, so engage engagement stage is the engaged we need to keep it short no corrections obviously this is even well we understand because we remember that we are in a grammar lesson we are just at the start of the grammar lesson and um the students might even feel the grammar you are about to teach yes we obviously don't tell them that okay guys it's this grammar lesson today yeah, we don't we don't want to spoil everything right at the beginning of, of of a class. So we don't splash it out to them. Yeah, we keep it just to ourselves. But at this stage, they might kind of, you know, feel especially those more experienced and more uh, higher level students what grammar to use and they might make mistakes or they might make well basically any mistakes, not even with the target grammar, any mistakes. But we go for no correction. This is the student's time. This is their star time. Yes, they are engaged. They are personalizing the things. They are having fun. They are increasing their student talking time right at the start of the lesson. So no correction obviously is, is, is needed. We need to keep, the, keep it short. We need to remember, yeah, that uh, we still have all the lot of things going on in a class. And uh, obviously smartphones are allowed not many, not many teachers allowed to do that. So yeah, be one of those teachers who let students use their smartphones to students' own advantage and benefit. Now, so that is the engaged stage. Uh, actually, see, they для этапу вони взяті з нашої новинки посібника граматики, який називається Grammar in Focus, рівня А2+, який має аудіопідтримку, який має ідеї для а, організації настільних ігор з учнями і а, добірку правил у таблицях і не тільки до кожної з тем, які а, містяться, які практикуються у цьому посібнику. Having said that, this is what I, I want to briefly draw your attention to, is that all the ideas, yes, they, 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 they come from the very first stage of every single lesson in uh, Grammar in Focus. So have a look, this one, uh, this one was about jobs. It just have, well, the, the basic task here is discussing pairs. Which jobs do you think are crazy? Why? Name five. What I did differently is I added some pictures to it. Yes, to make it even more fun for students. The next idea was with uh, grandparents and something that you wouldn't ever, never discuss with them. It's also from the book. Well, the only difference here is it comes with some uh, suggested ideas for these topics. But rather than that, I kept it more or less the same, but just given this yes or no topic or, or maybe topic. Uh, uh, extension. Then uh, pottery, there where it comes from, have you ever tried, would you like to, why do you think some people do it, plus a video to engage and involve and to cheat a bit on students and to make them, you know, frown at you and say, oh, that was mean. <laughs> Now, the next thing is the Great Britain most famous tourist attractions. Again, write the list of five, but what we did differently with you is that we kind of, we took away, we didn't let our students think about uh, most, uh, most known places. Yes, and we instead, we made them Google some other places. And then the Glastonbury Festival, here it comes from the lesson uh, on conjunctions. And actually the recording we were listening with you uh, to also comes from the book. 
here it's done in the format of Zeno practice. Yeah, so it's got the recording and it's got four questions with three uh, uh, different uh, picture-based options to choose from. So again, not only the not only the engaged stage, but then we've got grammar appearing in some context. We've got conjunctions appear in context for our students in the way of the Zeno practice listening activity. Now, this is this is the engaged stage. And again, um, uh, well, in the lesson, then after it, we have the study stage, right? And it, as I told you, we're not going to concentrate on this one much today because, you know, it's a matter of completely different webinar. There are a lot of things to be discussed about the study stage with you, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, I'm just showing you that, yes, it's quite its best. Yes, if we say, well, uh, here in, in, this, uh, in this book, in uh, um, Grammar in Focus, two pages is the lesson. And the study stage would take most of it. So the context, uh, the rules back at, at the at the back of the rule, and lots of practice activities. So this is what the study stage would come with. І тут я також маю таку невеличку інтеграцію, як зараз це прийнято казати на YouTube. І е, хочу вас натомість, якщо у вас є таке бажання, запросити до нас на курси підвищення кваліфікації про ТІЧ. У нас є окремий модуль, який присвячений саме навчанню граматики, який називається Rules Rule Don't They? Teaching Grammar to Teenagers. Якщо ви дивитесь цей запис ще до 27 лютого і у вас є бажання потрапити на курс Будь ласка, скануйте QR-код і приходьте до нас. Якщо ви дивитесь після 27 лютого, не проблема, тому що ми запускаємо ці курси регулярно протягом всього навчального року. І ви завжди можете зв'язатись з нами і дізнатись, коли наступний. І саме на цьому курсі ми багато-багато проговоримо про те, як починати урок, як а, а, презентувати нову граматику учням, як відпрацьовувати, які є труднощі з граматикою, як зробити її уроки ще комунікативніми, комунікативнішими, um, so on and so forth. Тому приходьте, будь ласка. Now, after the engaging study stage, right, um, we've got the activate stage, which is equally as important as the previous two. Yes, we can say that one of the stages, well, obviously the study stage is the key one. This is where all hard work happens, but it doesn't mean that we should neglect and we should, um, uh, uh, well, avoid, yes, the two other stages. Yes, they should be there. And activate stage is primarily about productive skills. Yes, and that would be speaking and or writing. This is where students could try and use uh, all that grammar, yes, that we've taught them, that they've practiced, that, that, that we've error corrected them, and now they can, in a freer mode, in a freer practice, try it out when speaking or when doing writing. Um, and again, it should be relevant, it should be fun, it should be personalized. For instance, what that could be in this, this lesson, uh, it says work in pairs, play the game, use conjunctions and or so because but. So basically the conjunctions the students have been introduced to and that they have practiced. Um, and well, the, the, the game uh, rules are very basic. Well, remember this is an A2 plus grammar level. So one of the students says, for instance, I like chocolate and another student adds the conjunction uh, the first student should use, yeah, but, and for instance, the first student adds, I like chocolate, but I don't eat it very often. And it goes on and on like that. Yes, so it's interaction, it's communication, it's free of practice of target grammar, it's a bit of imagination and making things up uh, all together and again, increasing students talking time, obviously. Well, the, the idea for the writing activity uh, here, uh, the lesson is about two and enough. 
So students have some sentence starters and they need, well, basically they, they, they don't have sentence starters, but they have some ideas, yes, for their sentences and they need to write the sentences that would be true about them, something you are too old to do, too young to do, old enough to do, so on and so forth. So they've got the idea, but they still need to make it up. They still need to think about it and, and do it in a personal way. Uh, passive voice um, uh, lesson. And uh, there are some questions for students to discuss. Yes, what's the best present you've ever been given? What's the most difficult part of grammar you've ever been taught? Are you allowed to have pets? Why not? So on and so forth. So again, it just boosts, yes, and encourages students uh, um, uh, while personalizing the content, using some passive voice, sharing their opinions and attitudes with other students in class. Or here we've got another. You see, uh, there is there is an idea for writing and speaking both. Yes, for uh, for for them to have for this activate stage to be uh, as nice as possible. Uh, another idea here, which again would encourage students Google things. Yes, it would encourage them to take their phones and Google things because it says research the Odessa Opera and Ballet Theatre and then write a description of the building and its history using some of the verbs in the box, write at least six sentences. So again, they Google it. The, all of the verbs here, they kind of, again, uh, motivate students to use passive. Yes, where it's located, it's built, it's designed, it's destroyed, it's protected. Do, 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 do. So they Google it, they use the verbs, and uh, again, they produce, yes, uh, themselves uh, something, some, 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 something done in a written form. Or, for instance, here, yes, uh, the relative clauses lesson. It says, write down your answers to the four sentences below. So the name of someone who you see every day, a gadget which you can't live without, the film that you want to watch again. So again, um, it lets students be as personal as possible, let them talk about themselves, let them personalize the content in a free mode at the end of the lesson when they have learned and they when they have practiced or been introduced to this or that grammar uh, structure and grammar uh, thing. So the activate stage, it happens at the end of the lesson, eight to 10 minutes. It could be speaking or writing or both. It depends on the time and on your students. Correcting the target language will happen because we would like our students to not, not to make mistakes or to spot where they've made mistakes with the grammar we've just taught. It should be personalized and smartphones are allowed as well. So, ми з вами подивились на те, що таке так, ось цей структура уроку ESA, Engage, Study, Activate, і як ми гарно її запакували у наш новенький ресурс Grammar in Focus рівня А2+, де всі ці аспекти, fluency versus accuracy, motivation versus demotivation, teacher talking time and student talking time враховані, і ми намагались це все збалансувати і дати можливість вам, шановні колеги, балансувати з цим і зробити уроки ваших учнів і захоплюючими, і результативними водночас. До речі, у нас запланована ще одна серія вебінарів, присвячених граматиці. Будь ласка, слідкуйте за нами у соціальних мережах. Дізнавайтеся про новини, і ми ще будемо з вами зустрічатися і говорити про використання Grammar Games, звісно, на уроках граматики. Нагадую, що ви всі отримаєте сертифікати участі. Ви бачите наші контакти на екранах. Ви отримаєте посилання на тест, який ви маєте скласти після перегляду даного вебінару для того, щоб отримати. Сертифікат, дочекайтесь, будь ласка. 
Це остання частинка невеличка нашої сьогоднішньої зустрічі. Це знайомство з Internal Education, що у нас є для вас, особливо для тих з вас, хто, можливо, зараз у пошуках підручників для навчання або знайомляться з нами тільки що, або думають перейти з якихось інших підручників на підручники видавництва Pearson і Internal Education. Отже, ми, ми, ми представляємо нашу компанію Internal Education, ексклюзивно представляє видавництво Pearson в Україні, що у нас є для а, вчителів і учнів а, шкіл. Якщо ми говоримо про молодші класи, то а, тут ви бачите перед собою два ресурси. З одного боку, наш бестселер а, локалізований підручник Fly High Ukraine. А, а, ось. З іншого боку, сучасніший, такий трішки прогресивніший, дещо забезпеченіший більше онлайн-компонентами підручник Team Together. Хоча платформа Fly High Ukraine також існує, яку ми розробили, і там дуже багато цікавого можна знайти. Якщо ми говоримо про середню школу, то тут два такі брати, молодший і старший, напевно, так їх можна охарактеризувати, Why the World і Go Getter, підручники обидва прогресивні, велика кількість проєктів, завдань на комунікацію, відео, відео від BBC, єдине що, Why the World розрахований на більшу кількість годин, 4-5 годин для шкіл і класів з поглибленим вивченням англійської мови, які мають більше можливостей, більше часу на опанування мови. Go-Getter розрахований десь на 3-4 години англійської щотижня. Якщо ми говоримо про старшу школу, тут ми можемо показувати двома прекрасними підручниками. Фокус другим виданням і хайноут. В них є багато чого спільного, є і різниця. Хайноут, до прикладу, трішки більш академічний ресурс. Він такий вже закладає гарний місток між старшою школою і університетськими роками. І він розрахований десь на 5-6 годин на тиждень. Ми є також видавничим домом в Internal Education. А, у нас є ті ресурси, які ми особисто розробили і надрукували для молодшої школи. Це My ABC Book, флеш-картки. Середньої школи – це культурознавчий а, компонент Cross Ukraine або підготовка для іспит для середньої і старшої школи Focus on Exams UA. А, тут є також а, підручник для а, викладачів німецької, для вчителів німецької мови і для учнів, які вивчають німецьку мову, які ми також, перший рівень якого ми локалізували, і це точно ми унікальні тут в Україні з локалізованим підручником для вивчення німецької, Perfect Fudy України 1. І, звісно, ще одна наша величезна гордість для молодшої школи, про яку я сьогодні вже згадував, це локалізований Fly High Ukraine. Тому ми є видавничим домом і багато а, зараз а, а, в нас є проєктів, які ми втілюємо потихеньку у життя а, тут в Україні. Стосовно новинок, це, звісно, Grammar in Focus, так, про який я сьогодні вже згадував і на якому базувався наш вебінар, і Fact You and Finger. Той ресурс, з яким буде дуже легко почати вивчати німецьку мову на самих початках п'ятого класу, коли діти зовсім не вивчали німецьку до того. Звісно, ми маємо багато платформ і ресурсів для чудового забезпечення роботи у змішаному форматі або дистанційному навчанні. Також звертайтесь до нас з цього приводу. І, звісно, курси підвищення кваліфікації про ІЧ, зокрема, курс на які я вас запрошував Rules, Rule Don't Day, але це не єдиний курс, який ми проводимо. Також дізнавайтесь про те, що у нас є для вас. Отже, ви всі отримаєте сертифікати участі. Тут ви також можете бачити контакти наші. Єдине, що потрібно буде зробити, це пройти зовсім нескладний тест. А у мене все на сьогодні. Дякую вам за увагу. Слава Україні! Разом до перемоги. Всього найкращого. До побачення.